Rilakkuma and Kauru is a cosy, lazy, and strikingly relatable show about an average Japanese woman and her pets slash roommates, a neurotic bird obsessed with cleaning, and a couple of sleepy bears. But not unlike the ever yawning titular lead, too many people are sleeping on Rilakkuma and Kauru. Rilakkuma is one of Japan's near infinite supply of mascot characters. Created by Aki Kondo in 2003, he has since become the face of stationery company SanX, adorning pens, binders, keychains, plush toys, and uh, this train. A TV show is just another predictable step in the world domination plans of any character cute enough to bankrupt a nation with their merch. But something is different in Netflix's Rilakkuma and Kauru. In this short form, 13 episode animation, whose tiny total runtime is just begging to be binged, we can exist, just for a moment, in the warm lives of Kauru, Rilakkuma, Kori Lakuma, and Kiroi Tori. It's one of the most relaxing, comforting, and brilliantly funny shows I've watched this year, and it's a bear hug of an antidote to a lot of life's day to day woes. Familiarity settles in faster than the seasons can change in Rilakkuma and Kauro, and while clean freak birds and forever famished bears aren't a commonplace feature for us, the problems Kauro faces are as present in our reality as they are in this beautifully constructed fictional world. Watching her navigate through money troubles, friendship and the true fear of being left behind hit me so deeply that I began to project myself onto her. An easy thing to do since this show was made for the working adult, who isn't quite ready to let go of their imagination. Bears can be chefs too, okay? It's here that we find Rulakuma and Kauro's charm. Rich in realism, but so richly resolute in delivering that message in ridiculous ways. Mostly accomplished by this tag team trio. Whether they're working out or actually working, together they inject fun into the everyday life lessons we're presented with. Do you believe in aliens? That mushrooms can grow on bears? That ghostly ghouls go bump in the night? That's the surreal nature of what Studio Dwarf have created here. A warped reality that inspires you to laugh. But what about when they materialise that midlife crisis? Or voice the weight of unfulfillment? That's when the scale begins to shake. This show has such ties to the real world, yet it keeps a noticeable distance from it, making each too short minute a pleasure to watch, but leaving pause for that lesson to sink in. Each character gets a little bit of focus, but it's Kauro that we follow. We watch her insecurities rile up, her jealousy, her desire for love, her panic. They all settle in faster than the seasons can change. And no matter how cute it may be to watch a bunch of bears exercising, that familiarity of our own lives, our own struggles, embeds deeper as time goes by. As winter fast approaches, as the nights draw in and we wrap ourselves up in thick blankets and spare bear suits, the show balances its optimistic nature with a dose of melancholia. Like Egretzko before it, a series that bet the farm on a relatability tinged with sadness and dissatisfaction, Rilakkuma and Kauru understand that not every day is a picnic. Life has its ups and downs, and instead of trying to bypass or fix those missteps, It reinforces the importance of perspective. With each final title card, we're reminded it's about how we approach life's speed bumps, rather than avoiding them altogether. In using mascot characters in such subversive ways, Netflix is making a statement that shouldn't go overlooked. Previously, these types of cash-ins would have been just that. Simple parades of recognisable faces in cute scenarios, 
aimed squarely at shifting merch to the most vulnerable of viewers. But Rilakkuma and Kauru has something to say, and it does so at the expense of its appeal. This is not a kids' show, not at all. To get the most out of Rilakkuma and Kauru, life has to have kicked you down a couple of times. And I got hit by a truck. Instant death. Which is why when the show juxtaposes its most mundane problems, like how to get motivated to stay in shape or why you weren't invited out to the group date, with the ludicrous storylines of a winter-themed fever dream or being rocked to sleep by a giant panda, it feels like a much-needed escape. It's because the show is so grounded that these bizarre distractions work so well and seem to accentuate the show's duller beats in wonderful ways. Spring always comes back again, and life moves forward even when you think it stood still. That's the not-so-hidden life lesson that threads through the very fabric of this show. Because in the beginning, Kaoru turns to Rilakkuma and says that no, no one, one came, came to the party. I'm the, I'm the only, only one, one whose life hasn't moved on. And yet 13 episodes later, we're looking at a different woman. Because life always moves on. It just might not go the way you want it to. We change constantly. We grow from our experiences and the people we experience them with. Over time, our world gets a little bigger, even if the one it's built in feels rather small. I suppose that's normal. This story is nothing new after all, it's one that's been told plenty of times in this saturated slice of life genre. Plus, it's one that you experience day to day. To see it visualised though, in stunning stop motion, feels like it's something special. And I can't help but think about the sombre tone of the show and feel that way myself, when I realise that Wilakuma and Kaoru is never going to make the impact in the West that it truly deserves. The painstaking work that the animators put in won't reach everybody. But to those that it does, my only hope is that you end up relating to Kaoru in some way just as the series composer, Nayako Okigami, intended. In general, anime just seems to move so fast these days. There's more of it than ever before, and oftentimes it's the action-heavy, sakaga-leading shows that rank high on our watch lists. But if you're up for it, why not take a page from an old brown bear's book and relax? Because in its two-hour runtime, Rilakkuma and Kaoru says it doesn't matter who you are or how you choose to live your life. Just remember that it never hurts to look back once in a while and see how far you've come. So, take a deep breath, grab your stuffed bear if you want to, and why not embrace what the next season has to offer.